back at it again. Another update, FSD 12.5.1, straight from a parking lot. Now, this feature is so cool because it's like, you don't really have to worry about being on this long, drawn out highway or something. You could leave your hotel, your parking lot, your work, your house, wherever it may be, and you immediately get the benefit of FSD. My wife, she's not a tech person, but she leaves the house, and the first stop sign she approaches, she engages FSD with our two girls in the back, and she's just chilling the whole time. She's going to the supermarket, she's going to her friend's house, play date, whatever it may be, church, and she's at ease. You know how it is with a two-year-old and a five-year-old in your back seat, super annoying, crying, making a mess, throwing stuff, and she doesn't have that recklessness where she has to like hold the steering wheel with one hand and then give a snack to the other kid or whatever. It's like, it's like made for parents, you know, but anyway, it, it works. It works amazingly well. And these updates keep coming out and just give, gives it a better overall experience in the streets, on the highway, parking lots, wherever it may be. The only thing, the only gripe I could say as of now is having the Tesla 20 Tesla model Y 2024 is missing those parking sensors because the smart summon feature would be pretty sick. Like say it's a rainy day. I just want to pull my car up or I just want to look cool and flex in front of my friends or my parents, whatever it may be. It would be cool to have that feature, but because I don't have the ultrasonic sensors, that feature for some reason doesn't work. Now I have the FSD uh, monthly subscription, 99 a month, and it says I get all the featured benefits. Maybe there's an asterisk I'm not reading where I don't get it without the ultrasonic sensors, but uh, maybe the AI cameras can, can update that. I don't know, Tesla Vision. Let's see if that would uh, actually take place. And if it does, that'd be cool. So we got some construction coming up. And before 12.5, it would be a little hesitant with these like you know, little chubby cones or whatever they're called. But now it's just recognizing it as a barrier. As you can see, it doesn't show a lane. It just shows a barrier like, hey, you can't go there. It's not going to try to go there. And it doesn't get super close anymore. Before, it would get really close. And even with these two cones, it kind of continues that barrier. So when you see it say pay attention to the road, it's only because I'm looking at the display. Um, it's really hard not to when doing these reviews. I try my best. But um, if you're looking straight to the road, kind of like a robot, just like set dead dead set on the road, it will not nag you. Um, it doesn't nag you to touch the wheel. It just says pay attention. Now, right here, I'm still in the middle lane, and it merges, which is pretty nice. Right when I cross this intersection, it's going to merge safely over. As long as there's no red, that means there's no one in my blind spot. And there you go. It did the merge efficiently. Sometimes what I've noticed with 12.5 update and now 12.5.1 is if it needs to make the left turn, it'll essentially speed up safely. It'll give it acceleration to go around the car. Maybe there's a car lagging it or you have to go around and it doesn't want to miss that light. It'll safely accelerate. So I think that feature has been really great. And overall, just the benefit of that FSD really like advancing on such a quick time frame, um, it's pretty nice. I've had the car since uh, May 18th and I noticed a significant upgrade on FSD. Like the FSD I initially had, it was cool. It got the job done. Uh, we took it to Wimberley. It kept us on the road the whole time. But during the highway times, it was uh, pretty annoying that I had to keep touching the wheel. It almost felt like, yeah, it's doing autopilot, but it kind of just felt like adaptive cruise control in a sense, only because it's like I have to keep tugging the wheel. And again, this is a first world problem, but it's like, when you think of FSD, when you think of Tesla, you think of full autonomous driving. And I know we're not there yet, but with those constant nags of the steering wheel, it's just kind of like, come on, dude, get it together. Now, I understand there may be some some regulations with the National Highway Transportation, whatever it is, NHTSA, whatever they call it. I know there's some regulations they can't bypass. I'm pretty sure if it was up to Tesla, the, the steering wheel will be gone. I remember Elon mentioning that. So, I'm wondering if, again, it says pay attention, but that's because I'm looking at the screen. I'm wondering if the robo-taxi feature is going to be as crazy as as he stated. I'm wondering if it's going to come out towards the end of the year because we have all this hype around Waymo and they're doing really well in San Francisco, back out in Cali. And, you know, they have like 20 cameras though, but still, I'm wondering if robo-taxi is really going to take an effect this year. If not, I mean, I don't really see myself, you know, renting my car out because I feel like people are just going to trash it. 
but it would be cool like you know hey can you pick me up and like while i'm at work i could pick up my wife and kids or whatever my family at the airport i mean that that would be sick like when my family come from out of town from kelly and they visit us in austin i think that'll be a dream like hey send the car to pick them up like that's so cool you know they just show up and it's just like whoa what the heck pretty sure my parents would freak out but it would be a cool feature. Now, this guy right here is merging over, and Tesla kind of seen that, and it slowed down a little bit, even though he wasn't in my lane yet. And um, it merged over, and for some reason, he, he stood in that lane. So I don't know why he had his blinker on. Maybe it was from another um, time he was trying to merge over. But anyway, it did that pretty well. So up and coming, I'm curious to see the continual upgrades that are coming out with FSD. And I, I just think it's insane that essentially your car gets better with time. You know, most of the time when you have to up upgrade a car, unless it's exterior like rims or a paint job or a body care, whatever it may be, you're kind of capped. Like if you want to soup it up more, you got to spend, you know, pretty much thousands of dollars to like add a turbo or more bigger heads or more pistons or more air intake, whatever it may be. It, it always is a huge task. The fact that I park my car and I have advanced updates and while it sits at night, it downloads the software for me. I don't even worry about it. And then I wake up the next day and I go to work or church or school, wherever, maybe taking the kids and my car is a little bit different and it's better. Like it's just, it's just crazy. It's kind of like your iPhone. You get the update like, oh, cool. That came out. Nice. So that's what I feel like. That's why they say Tesla is more of like not only a car company, but a software company. And when you drive a Tesla, you know, I'm coming from gas powered cars, a, you know, 2014 Toyota Prius and a Nissan Rogue. They were cool cars. They got the job done. Um, but when you move to this, the Tesla realm, you're not just driving an electric car. You're like driving a supercomputer that learns you. Like I get in the car, it has easy entry mode. Uh, it remembers my driving profile versus my wife's. The way I have my seat, I have it up, you know, pretty high. I like to see I'm short. And um, I put the seat back a little bit because I drive a lot for work. And it's just, it's sick. It's like your own like concierge for driving. And then it's like your own private driver because you're not really driving. You're just sitting there and chilling, listening to a podcast <clears throat> or a sermon or music or whatever it may be. And you're just kind of enjoying your day and the seats are super comfortable. Um, you know, I, I love it. I do outside sales for work. So I'm on the road a lot up and down Austin, sometimes in Dallas, sometimes in Waco, Plano, Texas, wherever it may be. And, and you know, some days I could do 120 miles uh, in one day. And with this FSD feature, it's just, it's just nuts. Like, it's like, wow, this is what driving should be like, you know, and it's not going to work in every scenario and it's not flawless yet. But I think if you want to be critical it could be that you don't have to lay back. You can't lay back and close your eyes. That's the only critical thing I, I guess you could say, really. The updates are seamless. They're smooth. It lets you know when it does it. I mean, you know, I'm just saying. I haven't seen any any other FSD or full self driving from any other manufacturers do this well. Now, coming up after this bridge, it, it used to be an issue here before 12.5. I have to get in my left lane. So not this one, but there's another left lane after this bridge. And beforehand, before 12.5.1, it would go in, out, and then in. I don't know if anyone has experienced that before, but that was super frustrating for me and my wife because the cars behind us would be like, dude, are, are, like we would potentially almost cause a wreck because you're going in the lane and then out. And they most of the time, people give it gas. Once they see you braking, they're like, oh, cool, I'm going to go around this guy because he's making a left. So that would be a little, that would be a little worrisome on that end. So that part I didn't like, uh, but it updated as you can see and did it very smoothly. So that's pretty nice. All right, so now we're entering a suburb area. What's cool about the suburb is most of the time there's cars parked and on the left and on the right of the street, right, two way street. Now you'll notice it'll go around the cars, and if there's a significant amount of space, it'll go more towards the right. So you'll see right here, it'll probably do it. Yeah, there you go. It's a little bit more towards the right. So it'll probably hit a car if there was one there, but because there isn't, it just gives you more of that space. Now coming up, there's going to be a few more cars and it's going to do the same exact thing. It's going to go around them, make some space, and then go back more to, towards the right-hand side, getting you closer to that curb. So it's pretty pretty neat feature. <laughs> Now, this was a little surprise. This Explorer came out, and it almost was going to go, and it didn't, but Tesla didn't really hesitate, so that was cool, I guess. I mean, I don't know. Hopefully, it noticed it. 
So the one gripe is stop signs. It is extremely slow, like a grandma. Like, look at this. Check this out. Look how long it takes. I mean, come on, dude. We get it. Like, there's a cop behind you maybe, but, dude, just do a little quick stop and bounce. Like, you know, quit holding up the line. Every time I do this and I let it do it, I just say, I'm going to do it. It's FSD. I'm going to allow it. You could tell the person behind me is, like, frustrated. I look at their steering wheel, and they go like this all the time. They lift their hand. It's hilarious. And I'm like... Okay, I added two seconds to your life. And I get it. No one really stops like that unless you're like a student driver. But other than that, let me know what you think. Do you like 12.5.1? Do you miss the old one? How is it working for you? Have you got the download yet? If not, let me know in the comments. I'd like to hear what you think about the new software update.